Great scotch. I sure can't use one after all those stunts they had me do today. Three crashes, four falls off a building, and a dive through a plate glass window. Which reminds me, how are your driving lessons coming along? I'm uh, between instructors at the moment. What happened to the guy that was teaching you how to drive? He found something he liked better. What's that? Alcoholism. <laughs> well, why didn't John give you lessons when you were married? Oh, he tried. Mm -hmm. You know John, he gets so upset about little things. Just because I almost ran over his mother. <laughs> Joyce, how's you doing? Hi, Mitzi. Will you join us? No, thank you. How's everything at the pet shop? Ghoulie. Boris is afraid of needles. Oh, well, I'm really sorry to hear that. Poor Boris. Who's Boris? A diabetic duck. <laughs> it didn't hurt him, but he was so upset he quacked himself to sleep. <laughs> hey, tell Mitzi the good news. Hey, Mitzi. TV guy's gonna do a cover story on me. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. <laughs> and the network's gonna put on a big publicity push, all for Joyce. She's gonna be a big star. <laughs> That's nice. Oh. That should be really good for yeah. you. <laughs> Why don't you have a toast with us, huh? No, thank you. I don't feel like it. Well, aren't you gonna help us celebrate? Joyce, I said I just don't feel like it. You get the feeling she's taking a little hard about the duck? Not the duck. Mitzi's been like this all week. She says there's nothing wrong, but she's sure not herself. All week, huh? Unhappy, listless, mm. depressed. She reminds me of my uh, sister. She used to get moody like that sometimes. And so one night I decided to cheer her up. So I, uh, I got into this clown suit. I put on this big red nose and all these flipper shoes. And then I ran into her room and I jumped on her bed. You should have seen her laugh. <laughs> that got her out of the mood? It sure did. At least that's what her husband told me. I just came from a meeting with the CBS Brass. How nice. Did you get a balloon? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, John, this is serious. We've got to get rid of all this violence. I mean, the public can't stand bloodshed, and if we keep it up, they're going to rip our guts out. This is a police show. How do we avoid violence? It's not that hard. Look, for instance, the scene you're doing right now, look, instead of a stabbing, why not make it a beating? Beatings are violent, too. A mild beating. Oh, that sounds exciting. How <laughs> mild? Maybe they could just kind of slap a guy. <laughs> Let me see if I got this straight. A community is living in terror because someone is stalking the streets after dark, slapping people. Uh, wh what about the sniper in the tower? Oh, I love that scene. That's why I come out with the bullhorn and I really scare the daylights out of them. Is that too violent? <laughs> no, no, we can keep him on the tower. Only instead of shooting a gun, Maybe he could be dropping something. Like what? His pants? <laughs> no, no, uh, like poison. No, uh, like bricks. No, 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 no. I've got it. I've got it. Nasty leaflets. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. The town is plagued by a slapping, nasty leaflet dropper. Right. This is what I'm wearing when I double for Joyce in the fight scene, but every time I try to grab the guy's knife, my girdle rides up. Uh, never mind, there won't be any knife. Doug wants the scene rewritten. Well, I agree with him, John. If I were the star of the show, and there are a lot of people who say I should be, I certainly wouldn't allow it. I mean, it's pretty violent to stick a knife in somebody's back. You ought to know, dear. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, Mitzi. That's okay, Joyce. One of these days I will get my license, I promise. You're never too old. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I can even get John to try to teach me again. You're too old. <laughs> You're so charming, dear. You know, by the way, you should stand up when a lady enters the room. <laughs> if one does, I will. <laughs> Listen, everybody. You're all invited to our place tomorrow night. Oh, oh great. Hey, hey. Network publicity is taking some pictures and they want to show me surrounded by friends. Oh, then this will be an acting job. <laughs> right. Yeah, that gives you 24 hours to learn how. I'll be there, Joyce. 
Now, if you ladies will put your claws away, we'll take a break while we make some changes in the script. Thanks again, Mitz. Hugo, the reason I stopped in is to apologize for being so rude last night. Oh, that's all right, Mitzi. Do you feel better today? Well, maybe a little. What's bugging you, Mitz? I don't know. Something's bothering me, but I can't figure it out. I just can't get excited about things lately. My life seems so empty. Oh, how come you didn't tell me about that last night? There are some things you just can't discuss with a man. <laughs> Would you hold your chin just a little bit higher? Thank you. The least he could do is tell you which one. I feel funny taking pictures without a dress on. Really? Tracy tells me there's nothing to it. Everybody say cheese. What kind? <laughs> Any kind, Fletcher. Roquefort. Except Roquefort. All right, here we go. Okay, thanks, folks. Well, that wasn't so bad. How about some punch? They're hors d'oeuvre over there. <coughs> Joyce, I heard you tell the photographer that you decorated this place all by yourself. Is that true? Yes, I did. That's really wonderful. Well, thank you. It takes a lot of guts to admit a thing like that. <laughs> I'd love to see your place sometime, Tracy. I understand you have an ashtray that opens into a bed. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Mitzi. What a day. We had an emergency at the pet shop. You just missed the photographer from TV Guide. It was a real crisis. I sure hope that article gets people interested in the show. Luckily, it turned out all right. Well, we're going to need all the help we can get to schedule a couple of big John Wayne movies offices. I love John Wayne. He's the greatest actor who ever lived. He'll clobber our rating. The man's a stiff. <laughs> Just a minute, everybody. That was very rude. Well, I'm sorry, but he had it coming. Mincy was trying to tell us something about her job, and we ignored her. Nobody likes to be ignored. It's like a slap in the face. What did you say? I wasn't listening. <laughs> I said, we're always so wrapped up in our own little world, we never pay the slightest attention to anybody else. Well, that's the trouble with show people. All we talk about is the business. And when Mincy comes back in her room, well, let's talk about something she's interested in. I know. I'll tell her about the time I sat in the hand grenade. Uh, Joyce is right. We all ought to show a little more interest in Mitzi. Uh, so, Mitzi, what's new down at the pet shop? You don't want to hear about it. I tried, Joyce. Mitzi! Come on, honey. We're all very interested, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Please tell us about the emergency. Well, if you really want to hear, one of the guppy tanks developed algae. That's an emergency? Ask a guppy who's been through it. What did you do? Cleaned it. You must have a lot of interesting stories about animals, huh? Not really. <laughs> how, how do you feel about John Wayne? Look, I know what you're all trying to do. You think there must be something interesting I could talk about. Well, there isn't. My life just isn't interesting. And I don't want to bore you with it. Uh, I think it went pretty good. John, I don't know what to do about Mitzi. I hate to see her so unhappy. Well, so do I. The fact that she lives with you is probably why she's so depressed. How could living with me... De Let me rephrase that. It's simple psychology. The two of you once shared hard times. Now, suddenly, you're leading a very exciting life. And living with you makes her feel left out. John, living with me is not what's bothering Mitzi. If that's an example of your skill as a psychologist, you'd make a better plumber. I have to go out for a while, Joyce. Oh, where? To look for an apartment. I'd offer to check your pipes, but I know you'd take it wrong. <laughs> understand it for a whole week now. I Means he's been looking for her own apartment. 
Well, that can be a bad sign. Sure was with my first wife. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's uh, read through this week's nonviolent script. Oh, John, before we start, uh, publicity sending over another photographer today. Gosh, Joyce, they're taking your picture again? Well, you know how photographers are. They hate to admit defeat. <laughs> Actually, dear, I think you're scheduled for a couple of shots today. Publicity? Penicillin. <laughs> John, do I have to change for this? Uh, yes, the scene calls for you to masquerade as a countess. You and Hugo will be dressed in very long, elegant, strapless gowns. A long gown? How do you like that? I shaved my legs for nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean Hugo's going to double for me in a low-cut gown? Yes, but only for a long shot. Presumably the tattoos won't show. <laughs> Can we read the scene now? It's been specially rewritten to conform to the new network policy. Fade in the police station day. The chief is speaking. No, Fletcher. Okay, you two. Today I'm giving you a different kind of assignment. It's going to be an errand of mercy. I want you to find a young runaway boy. Oh, the script sounds wonderful. Don't get too excited, Tracy. After you find him, you have to give him back. <laughs> I hate to say this, but we're going to need a few script changes. You can't be serious. This script hasn't a trace of violence. That's the problem. We took a look at it, and we feel we may have been a little hasty. I mean, we do have uh, ratings to consider. Are you saying you want the violence back in? No, 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 not violence. Action. Gee, I'm not quite sure I know the difference between action and violence. That's probably why you're so popular, dear. <laughs> it's very simple. See, action is what we do. Violence is what the other networks do. I don't see how we're going to be able to put any violence... But action! In, forgive me, any action in this week's script. It's the heartwarming story of how undercover woman finds a runaway child and reunites him with his parents. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me ask you this. Could the parents be maniacs? I don't think so. John, we need something. I have an idea. What if the child packs a water pistol? <laughs> what if the child... Yes, and we can do the scene where the boy goes berserk, goes into a room and wets his parents. <laughs> mm. Mm. Liquid violence. I love it. Oh, my God. I think we better take ten while Doug and I go over this. Joyce, guess what? I think I found the perfect apartment. Let's see, is this really what you want to do? It's what I have to do. Uh, you'd better get dressed for the costume party, St. George. All right, John. Mitzi, we have to talk. Come on with me while I change. Well, okay. Joyce? I'm in here. I really can't stay. I know you're in a hurry, but we must talk. Now, what's bothering you? Why are you moving out? I already told you. I just think it would be best. Well, why? Are you upset with me? Of course not. I think I know what's bothering you, Mitzi. A lot of things have happened to me in the last couple of months. Take this job. I suppose to you it all looks very exciting. Well, it isn't. My job is no more exciting than yours. Joyce, I work in a pet shop. The highlight of my day is telling people not to tap on the window. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say, dear. I do boring things all day long, too. Joyce, I'd rather not discuss it. Besides, I really should get back. I have to reverse the hamster's treadmill. If he runs in one direction all day, he gets moody. Everybody has this silly notion that people in show business lead glamorous lives. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's humdrum. Believe me, honey, there is nothing glamorous about my life. <laughs> There really isn't much difference between us. No, not much difference. <coughs> Come on in. <laughs> Joyce, uh, they're ready for the next scene and the uh, photographer's here. I'm almost ready. How you doing, Mitzi? What's wrong with Mitzi? She just ran out of here crying. Oh, no. Miss Whitman? I, she's right over there. <laughs> what are you doing here? Hugo 
said you ran out crying. You came out in the street wearing that? Mitzi, you really had me worried. I didn't know what you might do. But you're supposed to be filming a scene. Well, this is more important. You're my good friend and you were really unhappy. And I can't do anything until we straighten this out. Joyce, really, I don't want to talk about it. Besides, I can't anyway. The boss doesn't like friends coming in during working hours. It's a rule. Mitzi, you're not going to get rid of me. Well, okay, if you want to hang around, try to look like a customer. Take a number. <laughs> I'm the only one here. Sorry, rules are rules. Okay, now can we talk? What's your number? <laughs> 47. Sorry, we're not up to that yet. 23? 24? <laughs> Don't tell me. We're finally going to sell a Russian wolfhound. <laughs> Mr. Resnick, this is a friend of mine, Joyce Whitman. Nice dress. Isn't it a little busy for daytime? <laughs> Joyce is an actress. She plays a policewoman. Where? In Camelot? <laughs> she has her own television show, Undercover Woman. Oh, hey, listen. I've got an idea for you. How about using a bird on your show? You know, how on Beretta they've got the cockatoo. I really don't think so. Wait here. I'll go see if I've got something in the back. Okay, Mitzi, you might as well call number 47 because I'm not leaving here. I told you we're not allowed to discuss personal business on company time. Well, who's going to know it's personal business? Ah, personal business, personal business. Ah. <laughs> Stool pigeon. All right, Mitzi. Now stop beating around the bush. I want to know why you're moving out and I want it straight. All right, if you must know, I'm moving out because I'm not worthy of your friendship. Not worth it. What are you talking about? You're the sweetest, kindest, most generous person I've ever known. It's all a front. Underneath, I'm a jealous louse. And I'm so ashamed. I'm supposed to be your best friend. And I'm jealous of all your success and all the attention you're getting. And I feel guilty and I hate myself. I'm a terrible person. Mitzi! Mitzi, come here. Do you remember about a year ago when I was down in the dumps? Couldn't get a job, couldn't even get a date. But you had a job. You went out with a different guy every night. Every time the phone rang, it was for you. Mitzi, I hated your guts. You're just saying that to make me feel better. I detested you. I loathed you. You mean it? Mitzi, I want to see your feet go flat and your hair fall out. Oh, Joyce, you don't know how happy that makes me feel. Then you don't hate me for all those terrible thoughts I have. Of course not. Oh, Mitz, don't move out. How could I? Us rotten people got to stick together. <laughs> Lady, I've got the perfect pet for your show, and he'll go great with that outfit. Tyrone. Watch the cast of taxis. Hi, John. How would Joyce's driving lesson go? A drink. A drink? Yes, and make it neat. No glass. Where's Joyce? Outside. She insisted on parking the car herself. Oh, oh there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> That's far enough forward. Back up slowly, Joyce. Keep going. Oh, that's a shame. Joyce loved that tree. Good. Now she can take it to bed with her. Is that your car? Yes, my brand new car. Just leave it there, Joyce. Let them drive around it. Say when, John. I said, say when. I heard you. Hey, did you see that? Not bad, huh? I don't know why they say parking's so difficult. I think you're doing really well, Joyce. Pretty soon you'll be able to do it with your eyes closed. She does that now. How can you dent a key? 
Listen, Joyce. About the lesson tomorrow. Oh, it, it's sweet of you to offer, John, but if you don't mind, I'd rather not. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I know I'm looking a gift horse in the mouth, but why not? Well, to be perfectly honest, I just don't feel safe driving in those cars with the engine in the rear. Joyce, my engine isn't. 